verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we bow before you, sir. God, we remind you, Lord, what an honor, Lord, and privilege. It is, God, get to speak your holy name, Father. Get to call upon you, Lord. God, help me find right now, Lord, you can. Lord, I pray, God, you just, God, as you search, Lord, God, the hearts, Father, of men and women, boys, and girls, gather here, God. If any among us is lost and done done out to your son, Father, Lord, you can, God, convict them, Lord, was that last too late, God. Save those closest to hell, Father. And God, for those come in, Lord God, maybe struggling with something, Lord, whatever it is, God, I pray you blow by their way, God. Let them know, God, that you're able, Lord God, to, to fix them right up, God. Heaven, Father, problems, Lord God, the trials, Lord God, the situation, Lord God, and nothing bigger than you, sir. For that, I want to say thank you, God. I thank you, Lord, for the day you reach Father down, God, I can reach up, Lord God. Set me on a solid rock, God, be my name in the Lamb Book of Life, Father. I thank you for the day that you see me, God. Forevermore, Lord, I ask all you can, please have your way, God. Lord, hide behind your cross, give me, Lord, I pray thee, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> Matthew chapter 22, perhaps one of my favorite passages in the scripture. That it's about a wedding. You know, we talk about wedding a lot. If I came on top to you on the, the simple thought. That one right there, me. <laughs> the simple thought, if I can't small enough, look what Jesus did for you. Look what Jesus did for you. No doubt it. we sit around and we always depend on everybody else to do stuff for us. A lot of times, I don't think it don't seem like we are perhaps the latest generation that ever have been. You know, I, I sit down and I agree. The generation that is to come, if they ain't worse off, we always ain't any more lazy than we are about to tell them we're in a word of truth. Yeah. Because this is yeah. the way they don't want to strike a lick. They don't want to do nothing. Matter of fact, everybody wants to sit at home and draw a check. Amen. Nobody won't take care of it. I'm on the high. I'm on high. It's okay. I've got stuff going down. I saw it going down. We got to stir up a little bit. So I got stuff going down your shoulder. That's right now. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you can make a kid, you ought to take care of the kid. I'll tell you what else I believe of. I never have understood how that you will leave and go off and spend your money on a lot of tickets and let your daughter. The, your baby doctors uh, run around the house, the poop field doctor uh, won't even change. Matter of fact, we live a day and age where we're going to spend our money on everything, what we need to spend on. The, we got a mind on alcohol, got a mind on drugs, got a mind on sex, got a mind on porn. Ain't nobody got their mind on Jesus, my boy. Fire to God all to hell. Uh, Finances going all to hell. Life going all to hell. Everybody in your household going all to hell. Nobody cares no more. Everybody just sit back. Uh, and if you don't want to say nothing, we're just getting by. God, I think God did not save you just so you can get by. God did not just save you for you to just float along. God did not just save you for you to coast along. I want to tell you, it costs God something to get you into heaven, and it's going to cost you something to be in. The Bible says here in chapter 22, you got to understand that there's a wedding going on. There's a celebration. The Bible said it that we know that in. Chapter 22, verse 1, Jesus answered and spake unto them by a parable. You know, I, I love the parables because parables are something that everybody can understand. Yeah. Matter of fact, Jesus said, the reason Jesus used parables, it was his way of talking to you without calling you. Yeah. It was his way to come to you. You know what, when I saw that, Jesus talked in a parable so he could come to our level. You got to understand, we could not get to him, but he had to come to us. The same thing is, but he spoke to them in a parable or a story. The beautiful thing, I've heard so often, people always want to tell me this, they say, well, you got to understand that the parables are exactly that. They're just a story. They're just a parable. They're just a fable. And I said from day one, if Jesus was to tell a lie, as soon as he said it, it'd be true. Yeah. Right. If Jesus was to tell a lie, the very second he told it, it would become true. That's right, because everything he says, it is. That's right. So the Bible says this. They, he got up out of the started talking to the parable, and he said, the kingdom of heaven is like to a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. And we know here that the certain king was God. Dead. The certain son was Jesus. 
kind of interesting that on the news, I hope news I'm reading, that they come up, you know, they said that Jesus had multiple wives. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you're one, if you're saved, if you're one, if you're saved, 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 you're one, if
wrong with people, bro? Uh, that a man or woman that choose their own fleshly desires and the things of this world over everlasting life with Jesus. The Bible said those that invited did not show up. Scripture goes on, that's what it says. Verse 3, they would not come. See, I, I, you got to understand something before I move on. The Bible says they were busy. They were invited. Yeah. you got to understand, every single one of us has got an invitation. Yeah. We are all invited. But this is the key to the invitation, my brothers and sisters. Every one of our invitations has an RSVP on it. Yeah. Every one of us does. And every one of our RSVPs is different. Yes. Yeah. Mine was June 29, 1997. Uh -huh. If I had not melted in that day, hell would have been my home. Yeah. That's right. But your day is different than my day. But here's the key. Anytime you give an invitation, it's always got a day on it. And if you don't respond before that day, let me tell you something. Back in the day, you might remember when Star Wars figures, read the real Star Wars figures was out. Yeah. 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 Nobody in the church, wow. <laughs> uh, back when I used to collect the Star Wars figures, <laughs> back like 1978, Bob Faith, anybody know who Bob Faith is? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Somebody had that. You know what I'm afraid of? Shame. Yes. Preacher, I'm afraid of it. Yeah, I think God, somebody does. Somebody got shamed when they didn't watch Saul back then. <laughs> well, on the Bible Fed action figure, you had to send off to get it. And the one time you got back in the mail, had a backpack. If you press the button, it'd shoot a missile out. Yeah. But it took one kid getting an eye pulled out. <laughs> They quit making. So if you had sent off your invitation that you had, come on back and talk. If you sent it off before a certain expiration date, you got that very thing. But if you did not send it off before that certain time, you got what was left over. I found out. I'm still mad at my mom over this. <laughs> I'm a bitter person, pray for me. <laughs> she sent it off too late. And I got the Bob Fett, whose backpack wasn't worth a dime. <laughs> the same thing, my brothers and sisters, if you do not respond to God's call on your life before that expiration date or yours, yeah. uh, Amen. you ain't going to get the best, you're going to get second best. Yeah. That's what I'm going to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that last Fire and hell to me. Hey, it's like my idea. That's why I'm out selling for Jesus. Yes. Why you still got life in your body. So the scripture said it. Verse 4 again. He sent forth other servants. Say, tell them what you're bidding. Behold, I prepared a dinner. My often and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready to come to the marriage. It's funny because God would have stepped forward. He said, well, everybody like to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, if I prepare a meal, maybe I can show up later. Mm -hmm. Do you get the feeling that there's no links that God won't go to to save your soul from hell? Yeah. There is no link to God's love for your soul. No. The Bible said you killed the very best. Prepared a scrumptious meal. Had everything ready. Invited everybody once again. Listen to what the scripture said. Verse 5. They done the same thing that everybody's doing today. They made light of it. Or made fun. Listen to this. They went their own way. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. My brother and sister, that is not a picture of a lost man and woman today. I ain't never seen it. We've got so much 
junk now, so much stuff in our life you know, that we got to take care of all of it. I said, well, I said again, you prayed and prayed for God to bless you with a car. He gets you the car, but you got to lay out a church to wash it. Yeah. Come on, man. Pray. 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 You pray and pray and pray. God, give me a good job. Yeah. Come on, I can't pay my bills. Then he blesses me so much money. You go, man, I can't tie that much. That's too much. You pray, God, my baby, the neck, I need some clothes. God overflows your closets, your cabinets, and then somebody come across the road, knocks on your door, hungry, you won't get much. That's true. You say, I won't do that. Easy. Yeah. God, my daughter had this week. Matter of fact, God went to such great lengths. For paying all these things, but yet everybody said, I'd rather do this than spend time with you, Lord. Yes. So, you know what the hardest thing about getting saved is? It's admitting you're lost. Yes. Yeah. Nobody wants to admit they're lost. Yeah. That's right. If we're ever driving somewhere, I never ask for directions. Why? Because I know I'm lost. <laughs> I always think so then. <laughs> I said, Go on and ask for directions. Why don't you? You're the man, but you understand better than I do. <laughs> but I can't ever find where I'm going until I figure out where I am. Yes, that's right. You're never going to make it to heaven until you figure out your loss and you need Jesus. That's right. That's true. So the scripture says he went to great lengths, but everybody had an excuse. And when I see that, I, I think about this, how every one of us uh, is going to stand before a holy God uh, and give an account. Uh, that's like giving an account. Uh, and I can't help but think when he said, well, what's your excuse? You get ready to say something, you hear? And God says, you ain't got one. That's right. That's right. So you got to understand, did God is so good about brothers and sisters. He'll save somebody who ain't never heard of it. Matter of fact, Samuel, the Bible said, was in the temple. Lost, did not know the Lord, the scripture said, as a child. And the Bible said, God called him and called him and called him. He did not know that it was the Lord. He went to the man of God, the father of the man of God, said on four times, he said, it ain't me. He said, it's the Lord. Go back. And this time when he calls your name, say, here am I. The Bible said, this is how good God is. The Bible said that when Samuel went back in his bed, the Bible said the fourth time God called him by name, God come and stood right by his bedside. And he said, man ain't going to mess it up this time. Man ain't going to interfere this time. This one is mine. Matter of fact, we serve a God, my brothers and sisters, that we know we can't get to where he is, but he knows how to come where we are. And as a matter of fact, he come right and stood right where he was. The Bible said he called him by name. He gave everything over to him. And we know that Samuel was one of the greatest prophets in the ever world that God ever used, that God ever raised up. What separates potential from power? Jesus. Everybody's got potential, but everybody ain't got the power. The Bible said it's the hit it was. Everybody went back doing their own thing. Uh, took off over here, took off over there. The scripture said, it. verse 6, the remnant took the servants uh, and treated them spitefully and slew them. Because you got to understand something. They might come upon in your life. If God lets you live long enough, you might go through some persecution. You might go through some trials. Matter of fact, telling people about Jesus just might very well cost you your life. <laughs> But I said before, and I said, you know, what's the worst that death can do to a child of God? Hey, thank you, Come on. Thank you, Yes, amen. If you 
get on shooting and go ahead and get me twice. Yes. Make sure I'm getting out of here. Can I get a little stop there? That's why the worst that death can do to me is set me free. That's why the, let's not keep your mouth closing your eyes. Wake it up. And yes. seeing the yes. death star yes. hands up. Open it up your eyes. Uh, that's why right. you see uh, God's heaven open up your eyes uh, and see all those saints uh, that's gone on before. Uh, open up your eyes. Uh, that's why right. you see Peter, Paul, John. Uh, uh, can you imagine opening up your eyes? Uh, close your eyes in death. Open up your eyes in life. Uh, because, baby, uh, we ain't lived uh, until we got the Lord. We ain't had church uh, until we seen the King. We ain't had until you heard that heavenly chorus strike up a band when the land stops up. We ain't done nothing, baby, until uh, when we get to see Jesus, when we get to where he is, when we get to where Jesus is. I, I can't wait because some of those people, that, you know, this man told me before, he said, you scare me. <laughs> I said, my wife said the same thing, man, because she's been with me for 20 years. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord, because if you leave, I'm going with you. <laughs> she ain't in here either. It's probably a good thing. That probably wouldn't come out if she'd been in here. But the Bible said this. They went out and done their own things. They, they killed them, uh, slew them, verse 7. But when the king heard, he was wroth or he was mad. Got to understand it. When the God of suffering persecutes, yeah. God takes no suffering. That's, That's why right. you're suffering from Jesus. Yeah. Does not go unnoticed. Yeah. That's why right. it does not go unnoticed. Matter of fact, I love the scripture of Malachi. It talks about this. Malachi said every time that two get together and speak his name, it goes down in the book. God writes it down. When we talk about it, when we brag on it, when we lift his name up, he writes it down. If you don't think he's important to talk about, matter of fact, I dare say, is a more in the book when we spoke his name and didn't want nothing. Yeah. Then they all when we were praying on them. Yeah. Yes. The Bible says this. Here all of them were. The God laid all this stuff out there by them. And nobody didn't want none of them. I said what I said again. Uh, if a man wanted to get to heaven, had to take out a second mortgage on their house. Everybody here goes to the bank line up and yeah, more. That's right. Amen. That's right. But salvation is free. It's always been free. And it's always going to be free. You couldn't earn it. You couldn't buy it. And God knows we don't deserve it. And yet, without salvation free, brother, same ain't nobody no more. And the Bible said that God got mad. He heard how they was treated. His people. Bible said this. That he sent down his army uh, or his, his servants. And listen to what the Bible said. Verse 7. It said he sent forth his armies and destroyed the murderers and burned up their city. Uh, if you remember, the Bible said that the first time this world was destroyed, it's destroyed by what? And the second time God destroys it, it'll be by a raging fire. That's right, by a fire. My brother and sister, you do not want to be here when that fire breaks out. You do not want to be. I ain't here to scare nobody. I'm here to scare the hell out of you. That's not because you better wake up and realize that Jesus is coming back. And you better make sure that you're ready. Salvation is not a joke. It's not a game. Eternity is real. I don't care what the TV preachers say. It's real. So the Bible said this. Verse 8. Then he said to his servants, the wedding, and she's ready. But they which were bidden wasn't worthy. Thank the Lord. Verse 9 said, He said, Go on down into the highways. As many as you can find. He said, Bring them in. He said, Go to that park and bring them in. 
Go to that tent house. Yeah. Bring me in. Go to that nigga bar. Yeah. Bring me in. Go to that dance hall. Yeah. Yeah. Bring me in. Uh, those guys. Bring me in. Uh, those homosexuals. Bring me in. Uh, he's saying go out there and invite everybody uh, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Uh, you got to understand that God is willing to give everybody a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Go ahead. I thought you said God don't advocate sin. He does not advocate sin. Mm -mm. No. You must understand that when he invites the whoremonger in and they get saved, they don't stay a whoremonger. When he invites the drunk in, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Don't you know he can dry out fast and green shit? Amen. Oh, ain't hey, no way, Lord. Oh, well, I thought Mama could never do it. Ain't nobody dry out like Jesus can. That's not my fact. When that dope pig shows up, you know what God does? He puts something in your veins. Yes. That don't you can't touch. That meth can't touch. I'm talking about when God rewires you, my father. What about the homosexuals and men? Oh, I love them. Oh, yes. If you think that the blood cannot save a lesbian, that's right. Yeah. If you think the blood can't save a queer, I want to tell you, you ain't served the same Jesus at all. That's right. I want to tell you, man. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make a gay, a queer, a lesbian, a homeless, what can make our own whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Bible said it wasn't worth it. He said, go out there and just get anybody. Yeah. Have you ever felt like that? Yeah. You ever felt like when God saved you, he hit rock bottom? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever looked at the mirror and go, really, Lord, this is the best you can do? Yeah. It's funny because when one of us picked up that chicken and stuff this morning, and everybody's out looking at me so funny, that woman went through, she's 500 years old. She was pushing a bug in. I walked by and she goes. I said, I told Shay, I said, man, everybody, I was so beautiful this morning. I said, I said, everybody looking at me. I said, that woman right there is a hundred year old. And she looked at me and said, look. I said, I'm the man. She said, eating this is called your stupid hair. So the Bible said it is. Verse 10, so the servants went out to the highway, they gathered together all. As many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. Filled up. It was filled up. The scripture said this, verse 11, when the king came in to see the guest. He saw a man which didn't have on his wedding garment. So you got to understand, all of us going to have a chance. Yeah. Yes, well. But some of us going to get thrown out. Yeah. So I guess we're going to start all over. I was in bathroom this morning. Have you got on your wedding dress? Yeah. The Bible said he looked at him and said, How in the world did you how, how did you get in? You ain't got the appropriate attire. He said, You ain't got what we're looking for. What's he looking for? What are we talking about? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. You know, it's funny because you always got the way to Christ. They don't mind. You always got the way. You always got somebody to come because you got food. Yeah. yeah. And if you got an invitation, let's go through it. You know, you'll never see the name, man. And they've always offered invitation. Mm -hmm. Well, I lost it. Well, your name ain't on here. Well, it's supposed to be. This is the thing. You can get by down here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's real. But you ain't going to crash God's part. Amen. 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 
Matter of fact, this is what it says. God looked at him, King looked at him and said, how in the world did you get here? The Bible said in verse 13, excuse me, verse 12, the Bible said a man was speechless because your defense before holy God will be nothing. That's right. You ain't going to say a thing. You can sit all the law, so I'm going to tell this to God, you ain't going to tell God jack. You'll just be like me and be glad you ain't going to hell when you die. And the Bible said this. Verse 13, Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. They shall be weeping and gnashing of food. God is so serious about the rejection of his son, he's already got a place signed up for you to reject him. Yes, Amen. Why would it be weak and learn? Because you'll say, man, I messed up. That's why I'd rather go through this life. And every time I fell down and lost my cry with Jesus, I was going to make sure I was where I was supposed to be. Yes. I, I told you, yeah. I went 11 years. 11 years on false pretenses. No sad thing is, the church is full. Just breaking heaven on a false pretense. For 11 years, I lived a life. 11 years. Not 11 days. Not 11 months. 11 years. I look back and I thought about what kept me for those 11 years. Come on. The same reason you're in the hell right now, the same thing kept you while you were lost and undone. Yeah. God's got a GPS, my yes, brother. Yes, yes. 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 It's called God's protection service. Yes, <laughs> That's right. Yes. And can't nobody lay a hand on you until it's time. Yes. But this is the thing, my brother, that y'all be so ignorant, so naive, that you think you're supposed to do this life, but you'll do what you want to do, how you want to do, and won't you check out who you'll call Jesus? They could be a long man with a good five seconds in that. And how many people here? I'm not really. Amen. Because, see, that ain't something we want to admit. I'm going to tell you what I love you had your mad at me. Did you go to hell thinking everything was okay? Yeah. I'm here to tell you, if you hear you ain't got Jesus, it ain't okay. It ain't good. Matter of fact, you don't realize how close you are. I believe with all my heart that the trump of God, that there's almost, I believe the angel's going. He's blowing his lips. He's followed up in that horn. I believe he's getting ready to blow God's people out of here at any time. That's why I believe by my heart that Jesus could come back for his bride at any yeah. second. And I told you, if he comes back today, I don't know which one of y'all will preach next week. I won't be here. Matter of fact, I got a sign up sheet I need to pass out. I got two dogs that need fed should Jesus come back. Well, somebody here take care of them. No, I'm not going to be Because the sad thing reality is there's people here lost just like they always are. There's people here unconcerned. And my brother said, what we need for everybody to stand. What we need today, we need some saints of God. Some saints of God that is concerned about people's eternity. That's concerned about lost brothers and sisters. That's concerned about lost husbands and wives. That's concerned, you hear me, about lost children. That's concerned about lost saints and others. That's concerned about lost folks in general. That's just concerned. Folks, I want to tell you, God ought to break our hearts. Our hearts ought to break, my brothers and sisters, that there's people out there that do not know Jesus and do not care. It ought to break your heart that churches are full of people that do not know the Lord. If you're one of them, 
what better day than today than to give your life to Jesus.